Our first guest is Carol Tobias. She's a supporter of the movement to end abortion rights in America, and she's the president of the National Right to Life Committee. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I want to start off by talking about Senator Graham's bill that would ban abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. You were there with him, Ms. Tobias, at the press conference where he announced it. So does that mean the National Right to Life is comfortable with abortions up to 15 weeks? Our position for many, many years has been to uh, uh, protect as many babies as possible as soon as possible. Uh, this would be certainly uh, one step in that right, uh, right direction. So, yes, we do support this bill. But what about abortions up to 15 weeks? Oh, we will support legislation that's going to protect babies. Certainly we, have, uh, we will support earlier restrictions. This was a bill that uh, Senator Graham wanted to introduce. Uh, and actually, it's been in sitting in Congress for um, 10 years. Uh, it was a, a, ba a bill that would protect babies who have developed to the point where they can feel pain starting at tw uh, 20 weeks. But research now shows that that's moved back to at least 15 weeks, maybe earlier. Uh, so that is the bill that Senator Graham introduced. I know that you've been supportive of that legislation that Senator Graham has introduced and brought up before. But you know, I I'm trying to understand how your organization and others like it are thinking about abortions that happen in those earlier weeks and months. Um, you call it babies. Many people would say a fetus. Some people even say a collection of cells in the very early parts of a pregnancy. So what about uh, people who say, OK, well, what about that early phase? Are you OK with allowing abortion? If the ban is after 15 weeks, what about those first weeks? We know that, sci and it's scientific, biological evidence, a new life begins at the moment of fertilization. So someone can call it, you know, a fetus, a zygote, a clump of cells. That doesn't take away from the fact that this is a human being that we are talking about, a newly created human being. Uh, and yes, we support legislation at uh, all stages of pregnancy. Uh, we want to protect the babies, we want to protect their moms, and we will support a variety of legislation because we don't want anyone to die. So let's talk about the mothers and, and women who could die if they don't have an abortion. We just heard this very powerful piece uh, coming out of Texas. Um, what would you say to someone who is forced to travel across state lines or do something because they feel their abortion is medically necessary to save their life? There is no state in the union that would prevent an abortion if the mother's life is in danger. Um, I know people are saying that, you know, she could die if she doesn't get the abortion. If that's the case, she can get the abortion. Uh, there is no state in the union that does not allow the removal of ectopic pregnancies or does not allow miscarriages to be treated. Uh, there are a lot of, I'll just say it, lies flying around right now. And um, I think, it, you know, maybe it'll take a little while, but we need people to understand the truth that if her life is in danger, she can get the abortion. I just have to push back on that because we, The Washington Post and other news outlets, have talked to uh, people who have had to travel across state lines and get into perilous situations because doctors just weren't quite sure what to do. That's what, quite frankly, I don't understand. That's why someone goes to medical school. That's why they become an OBGYN, and that's what they learn in school is how to treat pregnancies. They understand if it is an ectopic pregnancy, if it is a miscarriage, they should be able to take care of that. I've certainly talked to a lot of doctors who will say, you know, they know what to do. That's what they trained for. So I don't know if these doctors are just being hypersensitive or if they are trying to use this to make a point to try to further the abortion industry. Um, but any woman should be able to get treated for an ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage because there is nobody that is going to prosecute for that. You know, what do you think about the Texas laws, places that are essentially deputizing everyone from an Uber driver to uh, to other people? Well, to um, let, me, let me rephrase that, Carol. What do you think about the Texas law and other states that are potentially criminalizing someone who just gives someone a ride? I mean, maybe that's some of the hesitation doctors have if anyone is sort of deputized to go after them uh, or accuse them of something. I think we've got, I know we do, we've got 50 states. Uh, Justice Brandeis many years ago called the states the laboratories of uh, democracy. So I think we've got 50 states and we're going to have different experiments in various states. Some, if it doesn't work, it's going to change. Uh, someone else might, you know, take something like that, but make their own changes. Um, and and we'll, we'll see what happens.
Many activists on both sides, or let me start that again. Many activists have said this is an issue best left to state. So where does the national abortion ban fit into that? We support legislation to protect unborn children at both federal and state levels. Um, so we're, we're going to work with whatever uh, entity is um, going to help us protect babies. And finally, Ms. Tobias, some Republicans are running away from Lindsey Graham's legislation out of fear that it will mobilize voters against them in November. What's your response to that? We have a lot of intelligent, independent uh, candidates. And they're going to have a variety of ways of how they want to, uh, what they want to do to protect unborn children. Um, we've seen election after election when people come out to vote on the abor uh, abortion issue, when they vote for or against candidates because of this issue, pro-life people have always come out in stronger numbers. Now, I'm sure the other side is going to be motivated this year, uh, but I know pro-lifers are just as energetic. So I don't think there's going to be a backlash against our candidates because of their pro-life position. Kara Tobias, president of the National Right to Life Committee, thank you for your time.